30 teams to go on my road to predict all 131 teams this college football offseason. We are moving on to the Colorado State Rams. Uh, now, this is the Rams team a season ago that was fairly disappointing uh, with some of the talent that was here. They, to a lot of people, had the best tight end in the nation a, a season ago, and yet only won three games. Um, a lot of struggle throughout this Colorado State program a year ago, and they felt like a change was needed, bringing in Jay Norvell, a head coach that had a lot of success as uh, the head coach of the University of Nevada, and a lot of transfers are coming with him over to this Colorado State team. There are some question marks they have to figure out, but a lot of people expect this Rams team to be a lot better. So will the Rams find themselves in the bowl game in 2022, or will they ran themselves right into a wall in Norvell's first year? What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate, and welcome to my channel. I'm predicting all 131 teams this college football offseason, which means I'm doing your favorite team. So hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you know when that video gets uploaded. And the fans of the Colorado State Rams out there, you guys are going to know this team a lot better than I do. So if you feel like I missed something, you want to add something, whatever have you, leave it in the comment section down below, and I'll be happy to hear what you guys have to say. So let's talk about the Colorado State Rams in 2022. They're my seventh-ranked team in the Mountain West Conference coming into the 2022 college football season again last year. A little bit disappointing. They were 3-9 and nine last year, only 2-6 and six in conference. Uh, however, when you look at the statistics of this team, they were fairly solid. 415 yards per game offensively, but they only scored around 24 points per game uh, defensively. They were, they were a fairly solid defense there as well. 377 yards per game with around 28 points per game a season to go. So, uh, definitely uh, Jay Norvell comes in uh, with a good base, but th there is some work to do. However, uh, some of the talent uh, that I think could have helped this team a lot this year uh, is going to be gone, especially at the quarterback position. Todd Santillo is gone off this team. Uh, Santillo, Santeo, um, however you pronounce that last name again, I apologize for mispronunciations. I'm sure I'll butcher a couple names in this video, but uh, he was the starting quarterback a season ago at a 60% completion percentage, almost 3,000 yards to be more specific, 2,958, 15 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions a season ago. Would have been that starter if he would have stuck around for this program, uh, but transferred out, I believe, went over to James Madison. So he'll be looking to push for the starting job with the newest FBS program in the Dukes. You lose a depth piece at the running back position, Marcus McElroy. You lose him. Uh, another depth uh, option at the wide receiver position, Jordan Cress. But here are where the, the bigger losses come in on the offensive end. Trey McBride, uh, one of, if not the best tight end in the nation last year, had 90 catches, 1,121 yards, and a touchdown a season ago. Probably should have had more touchdowns in my opinion. But, uh, hey, was a very, very lethal option for this Colorado State offense and you lose his production, as well as Cameron Butler, uh, another tight end who had 1,000, or, or not 1,000, excuse me, 164 yards and three touchdowns a season ago. It's going to be a new look offensive line for this Colorado State team in 2022 as Elijah Johnson and a lot of other guys are leaving that offensive line. So uh, a little sneak peek to what they have coming in. They have a lot of transfers coming in at the offensive line position. Um, and hey, the, the, they're going to be bringing in a lot of talent over from uh, Nevada and uh, some other programs there as well. I believe they have a transfer from Tulsa coming in, but it's going to be a new look offensive line for the Rams in 2022. Now, defensively, you lose your sack leader off the defensive line. Scott Patchen had 10 and a half sacks a season ago, so you lose his production. Toby McBride gone off the defensive line, had three and a half sacks. Uh, and then uh, Sion Quiraga gone as well. Only seven tackles a year ago, but two sacks. So you lose that production off the linebacking group, Anthony Koklanakis. So you lose that production as well, 19 tackles and a sack. And the defensive backs, Marshawn Cameron had four passes defended, or excuse me, five passes defended a season ago. Uh, Rashad Ajayi led the team with six passes defended. Uh, and then Logan Stewart had 28 tackles, tacked on an interception for good measure there as well. So when you take a look at the talent that is leaving this team, of course, losses like Todd Santillo hurt. Uh, Trey McBride, of course, probably going to be the biggest loss on this team. Uh, Ajayi was a pretty solid defensive back. Of course, the sack leader in Patchen. But let's look at the talent that is coming in. Now, before we look at the quarterback position, let's look at the skill talent that is around them. David Bailey is the leading rusher who was coming back on this team. Had 752 yards and nine touchdowns a season ago. Uh, A. John Vivens, 324 yards. Sadly, no touchdowns for him a season ago. And they're also getting a transfer over from Nevada in Avery Morrow. So a solid running back trio there. In the wide receiver position, Dante Wright, Ty uh, uh, McCulloch, 
uh, they come back as the second and third leading receivers from a season ago. Of course, only behind Trey McBride, Dante Wright, 554 yards, three touchdowns, uh, and then McCulloch, 415 yards and a touchdown a season ago for both of those guys, as well as Melquan Stovall and Torrey Horton, some notable transfers coming over from the Nevada Wolfpack, who put up some pretty solid numbers for a Wolfpack team a season ago that also had guys like Romeo Dubs and Cole Turner uh, as receivers, but had Carson Strong throwing him the football. So some solid numbers there. Uh, so this skill corpse, oh, and then uh, Tanner Arkin figures to be that starting tight end this year, along with, again, a new look offensive line. So uh, the skill corps around this team are good. However, the quarterback position, there's a lot of questions. So Clay Millen's a transfer coming over from Nevada. You also have Guy, uh, Giles Pooler uh, coming back on this team. Uh, so those figure to be your two options for the starting job, but they're both redshirt freshmen. And when you take a look behind them at the third and fourth string, like maybe they have more experience back there, it's just two more freshmen, uh, two more freshmen behind there. So this is a very, very young quarterback room. Um, and a quarterback room that may be lacking the experience that uh, uh, Sen uh, Senteo would be able to bring to this team. So they're going to have to find a quarterback that comes in and plays with a lot of confidence this season. I feel like Clay Millen will end up getting that starting job, but maybe they give uh, Pooler or one of the younger freshmen a chance during the season. I wouldn't be surprised if they play three or four quarterbacks under Jay Norvell's first year. Now, there's solid offensive corps around them, but the quarterback play, that's something they got to get figured out with how young that quarterback room is. When you take a look at the defensive side, CJ Onyechi is a transfer coming over from Rutgers, should be a key part of that defensive line, as well as guys like Mohamed Kamara, who had seven and a half sacks last year, uh, and then De uh, Devin Phillips coming back on this defensive line there as well. Phillips had uh, two and a half sacks a season ago. When you take a look elsewhere, the leading tackler, Cameron Carter, comes back, had six sacks, 100 tackles a season ago. Daquan Jackson, uh, 84 tackles a season ago. You return that production. And in the defensive back position, Taiwan Francis, who had 88 tackles a season ago. He comes back. Jack Howell, uh, he comes back on this team as well. 64 tackles, four passes defended, and an interception there uh, as well. A name that's not on this list is Robert Floyd, who led the team in interceptions with two of them a season ago. And then uh, Chagosier, that first, he should be an I apologize. And Usiam, along with some other defensive back transfers, are coming over to this team as well. So uh, some good talent here for Colorado State. Again, I think the big question here is will that quarterback position work out nicely for this team? Let's take a look at the schedule. And they got a couple real interesting ones here in non-conference play. That road game against Michigan and the road game against Washington State. So two Power 5 tests uh, for... Uh, the Colorado State Rams under new head coach Jay Norvell. Uh, but otherwise, when you look at non-conference games, should be two wins here as well. You got a home game uh, against Middle Tennessee, who now you can't overlook that game because that can end up being a tricky team to play, uh, but losing some talent off of that year's team. And then Sacramento State, an FCS team, probably should be able to win that one. When you look in conference play, you have road games against Nevada, Jay Norvell's old club, Boise State, San Jose State, uh, and Air Force, and when you look at games at home, Air Force, or excuse me, Utah State, Hawaii, uh, Wyoming, and New Mexico. So let's dive on in a little bit deeper into the schedule. Now, Michigan, Washington State, I don't expect Colorado State to win any of those games. However, maybe they can make them closer than they expected, And uh, but, but hey, th those are going to be two very early tests for this Colorado State team. Don't know if they're going to be able to win either of those. Middle Tennessee, Sacramento State probably should end up being two wins here uh, for this team. Uh, but again, we'll see how this Colorado State team plays out. But hey, throughout these first four games, I think going two and two and getting a solid foundation at that quarterback position is very important throughout the four throughout the first four games. Because then once you get into Mountain West play, this is a Mountain West conference that can be pretty good uh, here in 2022. So your first game out of the bye week and uh play. You got to go on the road at Nevada, Jay Norvell's old club. Now, a lot of transfers coming over from uh, Nevada to this Colorado State team, so an interesting storyline there with that game. Uh, Utah State and Hawaii are two teams that lose a lot of talent, especially Hawaii. I mean, one of the worst teams in returning production this year. They lose a lot off of last year's team. Uh, Utah State was the winner of the Mountain West last year, but they lose a lot of pieces there as well, including uh, some wide receivers uh, and the quarterback and Logan Bonner there as well. So, could be two games at home right there for Colorado State to maybe gain some uh, momentum and get back over uh, the 500 uh, line. Possibly can go four and three throughout the first seven games. 
when you look, you got a couple tough road games there next. Boise State, one of the better teams in the Mountain West, and figure to push for a spot in the conference championship game. And then on the road there against San Jose State as well. Uh, when you look elsewhere, uh, the home games against Wyoming, that's a team that also loses a lot, brings a lot of talent back. And Wyoming's a team that pulls off upsets every year. Now, I don't think Wyoming's going to be that great this year, but if I were the Colorado State Rams, I'd watch out. And then you got a home game against New Mexico there as well. Uh, and I don't think New Mexico is going to be that great. And that road game against Air Force going to be a little tricky for this Colorado State team. Now, I don't do game-by-game -game predictions. Do a more percentage-based outlook. Tell me predicted team's record. So if the game's in red, I just don't see you winning the game. If the game's in orange, I still don't see you winning, but it is college football and upsets can happen. Yellow are your 50-50 or high upset potential games. Games in yellow green are games that you should win. But hey, watch out for the team on the other side of the ball in games in green. Have you win it. So Sacramento State should be a win there. And I think they also should be able to get wins against Hawaii, Wyoming, New Mexico, and Middle Tennessee. Okay, so if they can win those five games right there, that is five wins. That's already five wins in Jay Norvell's first season. So you got to look for one more. Well, it's not going to come week one at home again. Or it's not going to come week one when you have to go on the road to play Michigan. Michigan, too talented of a team for Colorado State. I don't see Colorado State being able to win that game. I also don't see it coming against on the road against Washington State. I think that's going to be a tricky game in Washington State. Possible Pac-12 sleeper team uh, with Cam Ward and company coming in to that team at the quarterback position. So uh, watch out for Washington State because that could be uh, a very dangerous team. When you take a look elsewhere, I also don't think the sixth win will come against Boise State or Air Force. You have to go on the road to play two of the better teams in the Mountain West Conference. I don't see you getting wins there. If you want to look for the sixth win in this Colorado State uh, locker room, look at the games here in yellow. On the road at Nevada. Now, a lot of interesting storylines here with this game. Uh, Nevada, playing at home, are going to be looking to uh, show Jay Norvell what he's missing out on uh, in 2022, which Jay Norvell kind of abruptly left for this, left for this Colorado State program. Uh, and Colorado State have a lot of former Nevada players on it, so they're going to be looking to make a statement there as well. So that is a very, very interesting game uh, on the road, a Friday game uh, on October 7th. So I would watch out for that game. Uh, uh, that's going to be a very interesting game and possibly could be a very pivotal game in deciding which of those two teams make a bowl game. Uh, San Jose State loses some talent from last year as well, uh, but hey, uh, including quarterback Nick Starkel, uh, but they are getting uh, some transfers over uh, from some other programs, including, I believe, Siobhan uh, Cortiero, the quarterback, the old quarterback of the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, who, again, lose a lot this year. Uh, so on the road against San Jose State, that one's going to be tough there as well, um, with Brett Brennan still there as that head coach. I like the way he coaches that team. So that one's going to be a tough one. So maybe you don't get your sixth win there. But again, you could go on the road and win that game. Uh, and then that home game against Utah State there as well. Um, um, the, again, Utah State's a team that loses Devin Tompkins, Logan Bonner, a plethora of other talent uh, could be the sixth win right there. And honestly, I do think Colorado State gets that sixth win in 2022 in Jay Norvell's first season. I like this Colorado State team. I think they have a good skills core. I think they have a good running back trio, a good wide receiver room. I think the tight end room will fare out pretty well as well with the new look offensive line. Defensively, I think they're solid. It's just figuring out that quarterback play that I think is the big question mark for Colorado State this year. But if they can figure it out, I think this team is going bowling in 2022. In Jay Norvell's first season as the Rams head coach, that's going to do it for my talk on the Rams. Be sure you guys leave a like, comment, subscribe. Anything like that does help support the channel. And remember to play hard but tailgate harder. I'll see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.